2020, I started to get involved in crypto, took a lot of my uh, private clients along for the ride, and we made massive profits. And you can see here, this was Cardano. Cardano shot up 4,000% in 11 months. And we were buying and selling along the way. So we were taking profits and then buying the dips. So we actually did even better. Bitcoin made a massive gain. Another one, these are from my A portfolio. In total, we had 20 odd tokens we were buying. I think one of them went over 10,000%. It was insane. This was the title of the webinar I hosted in the October when I opened this up for normal members to get involved. And why I said I believed investing in cryptocurrencies could be the best financial decision of your lifetime. And boy, was I right. I think it's going to happen again. And therefore, keep your eye out for other posts I'm going to make in the coming weeks and months. I showed you the other week how I made 198% profit in 10 days on a stock allied to Bitcoin as well. And as I said, if you watch the rest of this video, you will understand my reasoning in 2020. I explained why I thought crypto was going to go on a run. I said that I expected Bitcoin to double and it tripled within six, eight weeks. And I also spoke about the effect of inflation, how it was going to eat into your money. And I was also talking about how I anticipated that mortgage rates would double and triple as well and the effect that that would have. And nothing's changed. And in fact, if anything, everything's got worse. And I think, again, that's probably why we're going to see another crypto boom. So check out the rest of the video, watch it the whole way through, and you will understand why. And it's not just because of the tokens, it's because of the blockchain technology. So set yourself, turn off everything else, get yourself a cup of tea, cup of coffee, and sit down and educate yourself about crypto and know what to look out for this time. Righty ho, as it says on the screen, why I believe investing in cryptocurrencies now is could be the best financial decision of your lifetime. And what we're going to show you in this session is we're going to cover why leaving money in your bank isn't a good idea, plus alternative options, why buying crypto could be the best decision, why Wall Street and the big banks are now embracing crypto, and why your government is trying to create its own crypto. At the end of the presentation, I will show you three of my top coins that I suggest to all my family and friends that they should have bought. I was recommending Bitcoin way back in, in March, around seven, eight thousand dollars But most of you know me, I traded stocks in the 90s. I traded million dollar funds for clients until this year when I retired. And uh, this is one of the gentlemen who joined us originally. This is Steve from the UK. He's been with me as a private client for since 2008. And as he mentions in his testimonial, he, he was one of the beta testers that bought gold, as suggested back in March, and Bitcoin at 8, 1 at 30 back in May, I think it was. Okay, so what we're going to look at first, before we get onto the subject of cryptocurrencies and the blockchain, what we're going to look at is why you should look at other places to keep your money other than the bank at the moment. Because clearly, there is an issue with the bank in terms of interest rates. The Halifax, not the Halifax, HSBC today in the UK are reported they're going to start charging you to have money in the bank. There are over 20 countries in the world now that charge a negative interest rate. So you give them money and they do what they want with it and they charge you for looking after it. And that includes Switzerland, Denmark and Japan that we have on here. And one thing's for sure, after the COVID situation, things can only get worse. So big concerns ahead, one of which is inflation. And the older ones amongst you will know that inflation is the rate at which goods and services go up every year. And your government has a target. The government generally sets a target of 2%. Most of the major banks over the last five, six years, that is their goal. The reason why they want inflation is that if the price of things are going up in the shops, the theory goes from The Economist that people are more likely to go out and spend because they're scared of missing out. And that's why the government set the targets. The inflation situation, the older ones along among us will remember back in some scary days. This is the US inflation rate going back in the 1970s. It went to 5% in the 1980s. It went to 13%. Throughout the 90s and early 2000s, it meandered around two and a half. And then the UK. 
And what you can see on here, the big squiggle on the left is after the First World War. And what tends to happen, you get inflation spikes after crises, major events, and often financial meltdowns. So there was another one at the end of the 30s, the early 1940s, and then the big ones in 1975, 1980, when inflation in the UK hit almost 25%. Now, if you don't understand what inflation is about, for the younger ones amongst you, just quickly going to show you what happens. This is an inflation calculator, and what it's saying is if you have 10,000 in the bank now, and the inflation rate is 2%, at the end of 10 years, your money would be worth 8,200. And that is because inflation is eating away at it. If the inflation rate goes up to 5% over 10 years, your money is only worth 6,139 at today's rate. Then it starts to get really scary because if the inflation rate starts to go up and the central banks are aiming for it to go higher, if it gets to 10%, your money in your pocket is only worth 3,855 at today's rates. And then the scary one. So if we get back up anywhere near the 20% that we've just seen in the US and the UK, after 10 years, your spending power for your money is $1,600. This figure is if you wanted to keep pace with inflation. So let's say you were buying a pension and you want a pension of $10,000 a month. In 10 years time with the inflation rate as it is, you would need your funds to be 61,000. That is the problem with inflation. The Federal Reserve in the US on the 16th of September said they are aiming to push inflation above 2%. They say it's because they want it to then average out at that over a period of time. But believe what central banks tell you with a pinch of salt. The other thing that they expect is they expect interest rates to stay near zero through 2023. So the danger is you have money in the bank, it's not earning any interest, and then the inflation is eating it away. Now, the big concern is hyperinflation. And hyperinflation usually occurs after a crisis. And here, this is a picture of Germany, uh, German children and a lady and a gentleman. 1923, the lady is dressed in a dress made out of banknotes. The children are playing with blocks of banknotes. This gentleman is papering the wall with it because it, the money was so worthless, it was cheaper than wallpaper. Now here, not quite sure where the guy stood guarding it. This is the pile of money that is ready to be burned. It got to the point in the end in Germany that toilet paper was more expensive than the currency and therefore the only thing they could do with it was burn it. And another picture here of some kids who have made a kite. Now, all sounds very fanciful. What does it actually mean? If you went out to buy a loaf of bread in January of 1923, it would cost you 250 marks. By the end of November in 2000, uh, sorry, 1923, the same loaf of bread would cost you 200 billion marks. Get your head around that one, guys. So it's not all history. This is Zimbabwe. This is 2008. This is a $100 trillion banknote. The hyperinflation in Zimbabwe got so bad that in November of that year, it was estimated it was at 79,600 trillion percent. What happened next? The currency collapsed. If you had your life savings and assets tied up in the currency, it was worthless. They then went on to the US dollar and years later went back onto their own currency and the cycle started again. Now, another one. This is in Venezuela. This is more up to date. And last year, 2018, 2019, the government in Venezuela do not publish their inflation figures because they are so terribly bad. But Bloomberg created this graph. And what it's showing you was in January 2018, a cup of coffee in a cafe in Caracas would cost you 50 cents. By the end of the year, the same cup of coffee would cost you 1700 bolivars. It's even worse because they actually devalued the bolivar during the year and it would actually have been the equivalent of 170 million bolivars for a cup of coffee. 
Okay, so we talked about history. We've talked about perhaps you, you could say with the African situation in South America that it's not mainstream. But the Bank of Cyprus in 2018, they screwed up. They invested in Greek bonds. They invested in Greek bonds because the Greek bonds were at the time were paying 10% interest. The reason they were paying 10% interest is they were virtually worthless. It was a gamble and the Cypriot bank, and there were two banks in Cyprus, I forget the name of the other one, were on the verge of bankruptcy. To prevent a run on the banks, they, they stopped people drawing money from the bank. And this is not a third world country. This is part of the European Union. And what the European Union came out and said was, okay, if you want to us to help you with a bailout, then what you need to do is you need to tax 6.75% from every bank holder in Cyprus. This is illegal. Within the EU, there is a rule, their own rule, that says that your first 100,000 euros in an account is protected. They were willing to try to force the Cypriots to take 6.75% from everybody. You had pensioners with a few hundred pounds, 100 euros, people with minimal sums. Eventually, they backed off on that one and they came up with a plan. They took up to 47% of client funds over 100,000. So within your country, within the UK, I think it's 100,000 pounds, USA, $250,000. Your government sets a level that is supposed to protect the money in your bank. So just be careful if you think that it couldn't happen to you. So as we I'm going to grab a quick drink, as it says in the slide, now you can see why leaving money in the bank or under your bread is not such a great idea. One of the things that people need to get their heads around, I had a friend of mine yesterday, he said, look, I, I, I kind of understand, I think I understand what you're talking about, but I'd rather have my money in dollars. And I said, okay, explain to me why. Well, I, I understand it and I trust it. And it's a valid point of view. I understand that. But the situation with the currencies around the world nowadays, they are what is known as a fiat currency. And a fiat currency is one that is not backed by anything other than the government's word. And what happened is in 1946, I believe it was, at the end of the Second World War, the superpowers got together and the Bretton Woods Agreement, they agreed that the currency in circulation would be supported by the equal amount in gold. And that situation ran until the early 1970s, at which point Nixon managed to persuade other central banks to come off the gold standard, as it was known. Now, at that point, they, were, they had an issue with inflation, and they were also running out of currency to fund the, the Vietnam War. So once they come off the gold standard, now the central banks can print as much paper money out of thin air as they wish. There is no limit. And this is what's known as fiat currencies. And you've seen it recently with the COVID crisis. Governments have had no money for anything for years are suddenly producing trillions of dollars and pounds and euros. So what are your alternatives? If you have a chunk of money and you're not sure what to do, well, one of the standard safe havens is gold. However, it is not out of the reach of governments. It's expensive to store and to insure, and it's not very easy going down to the shops to buy your loaf of bread with a bar of gold. But I do suggest anybody that uh, is, has a portfolio or is concerned about the money should consider putting something into gold. But this one, this one is really scary, and I showed an American client this a few weeks ago, and he thought I was joking. In 1933, after the Great Depression, Roosevelt signed into law an executive order that was to confiscate gold from all American citizens other than dentists. And before the 1st of May 1933, you had to hand in your gold, coin, bullion and certificates to the Federal Reserve. If you did not hand in your bullion, you could be fined up to $10,000 in 1933 and or 10 years imprisonment. What they did then is they bought the gold off the citizens that they'd forced to hand it over. They bought it at $20.67 an ounce, and a year later they revalued gold at $35 an ounce. So if you believe that your government 
is <laughs> your money's safe near your government. I think you should at least consider that it might not be. Now, another thing clearly is property. Property is traditionally a, an asset. The issue at the moment, yes, the prices are down. And if you've got cash, it may be the time to buy it. But if you need a mortgage and the interest rates shoot up, you could have a problem. And with COVID-19 at the moment, a lot of people are struggling because they, they have tenants who are unable to pay the rent. And the other thing is with property in a slump, let's say you're retiring next year and you were gonna sell your big house, you could well find that your asset has dropped dramatically. And there's also the danger of ne negative equity. And again, the older ones amongst us will understand that one. So interest rates in the last 30, 40 years in the UK, we had a period in 1980 at 17%, in 90 at 14%. And you can see the other figures here. What does it mean if you buy property on a mortgage and at the moment, let's say you're paying three and a half percent on a 200,000 mortgage over 30 years, your repayments are 1,096. If you have a tenant in the house paying you 1,500 a month, your expenses are covered. They're buying your house uh, for you because they're paying your mortgage and everything is wonderful in the world. However, if the interest rate was to go up to 13.5%, and we've just seen periods when it went to 17, now your repayment is 2,488. You are hoping that the tenant continues to pay the money, but now you're a grand short per month. Other options, stock market. The stock market in the US at the minute, well, everywhere, would, the NASDAQ terrified me. I would not be invested in the NASDAQ at the moment. You've got companies like Tesla, with a very poor PE at, at ridiculously high prices. Apple, a few weeks ago, Apple was valued at more than the top 100 country, uh, companies in the UK, the whole of the UK top 100 stock market. This was the crash back in March. And the danger, of course, at the moment is we could be on for another one. So I certainly wouldn't personally be buying at the top at the minute. So to recap, we've looked at leaving the money in the bank. We've looked at what inflation can do and particularly to property and gold and whether or not to go put money into the stock market. So I'm just gonna grab a quick drink and we're gonna have a look and see whether or not crypto could be the solution. So quick poll, Larry, if you could put this up for me. How many of you missed out on the Bitcoin boom in 2017? 93%, okay, 93%. Well, the good news is you are not alone, guys. I didn't get it, didn't, couldn't get my head around it. The banks didn't get it. Wall Street didn't get it and couldn't because of legislation. Big investors didn't get it and central banks didn't want it. So you're not alone. But what has happened since? These are some of the companies now using the blockchain. And I'm only very briefly gonna explain the blockchain. For cryptocurrencies and data to be transferred around the world, the means of transporting it is the blockchain. So the blockchain is transparent. It is not controlled by a central ent entity. And you can see now, the, have a look here, see if you recognize probably most of these big companies that are currently using the, the blockchain already. Deloitte have done a survey recently and from big companies in the US with sales of over 500 million and 100 million in the rest of the world. And 82% organizations are hiring blockchain people. 55% say it's become critical for their organizations. And 83% believe if they don't get involved, then the competition will beat them. The other real crucial important part of all this is regulation and whether it will be accepted, particularly in the US. The CFTC, which is the Commodities Futures Trading Commission in the US, the chairman last week said, let me just basically say how impressed I am by Ethereum, full stop, period. He also said that he expects a large part of the financial system could end up on the blockchain. Blockchain could revolutionize the internet, just like email did to the postal service. Another example of how it is going mainstream. This company, Grayscale, are allowed by the SEC in the UK, sorry, in the USA, to, to run a fund on a Bitcoin fund, which currently is only available to high net worth investors. 
but the crucial part is the SEC have allowed it. Next up, JP Morgan, the biggest bank by asset in the US. In 2017, their CEO, Jamie Dimon, called Bitcoin a fraud. In 2019, JP Morgan announced their own crypto. They said, we've always believed in the potential of blockchain and the supportive of cryptocurrencies as long as they're properly controlled and regulated. And of course, the banks love control. May 2020, JP Morgan is now banking for two of the biggest Bitcoin exchanges, which is Coinbase and Gemini. And Mr. Diamond now says Bitcoin is looking mostly positive and cryptocurrencies more broadly have longevity as an asset class. So if you felt that you, you were the only one that missed out, but I think it's fair to say that very few people in the world of finance got it either. Now, in terms of longevity as an asset class, Bitcoin is being seen by funds and by rich investors and high net worth investors as potentially similar to gold because it has a limited supply. So we talked before about the fiat currencies where the government can print as much money as they like. Well, Bitcoin has a limited supply and the limited supply means, of course, standard economics. If there's not enough around and suddenly people are piling into it, then the value should go up. Santander, the 16th biggest bank in the world, in 2018 started to offer an app to its clients and on their phones now they can transfer money all over the world and as of July this year they have done so. Half a billion dollars has been transferred by Santander via the blockchain. The US again, another example of how it's going mainstream, Kraken, which is a, an exchange in the US, has been granted a banking license in Wyoming. It is the first crypto company in history to be given a banking license. And this guy, I always say John Paul Tudor Jones, pop singer. Paul Tudor Jones, he's the, one of the richest guys in America. He also is COO of a 40 billion hedge fund. And he came out in May this year and he said, we could be witnessing the birth of a store of value. And that is what these guys are looking at, similar to gold. And he also says it's a great speculation. I have just under 2% of my assets in it. It may end up being the best performer of them all. I kind of think it might be. I'm going to be conservative and keep a tiny part of his assets. His personal fortune is estimated to be 5 billion. Now this one, my daughter likes this one. And this is George Ball. George Ball is a gentleman, he's 82 years old. Previously the CEO of the Prudential Group, the biggest financial company on the planet. He said two weeks ago, I've never said this before, always been a blockchain, crypto and Bitcoin opponent, but the very wealthy investor and trader will turn to Bitcoin or crypto as a long-term safe haven. Again, they were looking at what he explained in this interview. They want to get it away from the government. They want to have the privacy aspect to a degree. He claimed it wasn't for tax purposes but also they want to have a chance of making a profit. It's estimated if leading hedge funds, and that's the way it's going, if they allocate just 1% of their assets into Bitcoin, Bitcoin would hit 40 to $50,000 per coin in a relatively short period of time. Now, another flip-flop, we've labeled this one, this to show you how things have gone from one extreme to the other. The Bank of International Settlements in 2017, their head, Guy said, cryptocurrencies, in a nutshell, it's a bubble, it's a Ponzi scheme. 2019, he clarified that the agency is now working to support the creation of digital currencies at many central banks. 2020, Lithuania became the first European central bank to launch its own crypto. And this is the important bit, guys. This is the deputy governor of Lithuania's central bank, there is a legitimate threat that someone else will take our space. And what he's referring to that is it's all about control. That was the important part there. It's not, we're not talking third world central bank skies and banana republics. These are the countries who are currently testing or developing crypto. And the central bank of China at the moment is actually physically beta testing it within the Chinese state. Also, the UK, the 
governor of the Bank of England the other week said that Bitcoin was very risky. He didn't mention that the, the Bank of England are also looking to create a crypto. And just bear in mind, guys, this is not the same as crypto that we're talking about. And it is not a, ver it's not a digital version of the pound. They've already got that. This is to create their own cryptocurrency. Now, this was then huge news, and this is giving you an example of why we were trying to get this information out to you quickly, because this is all happening so fast. This is huge. PayPal, on the 21st of October, announced it has integrated cryptocurrency buying sellage, selling storage and payments into its global network. PayPal has 346 million users. It has over 20 million vendors. Between them now, they can do business and trade in crypto for goods and services. It's not as straightforward as it sounds. It's going to be done in stages. But the fact that, in effect, PayPal have endorsed it is a major step forward for crypto to be accepted in the mainstream. Now, I told you about Paul Tudor Jones in May. He said it's a great speculation and he's got 2% in it. This week, he came out... 22nd of October last week. I like Bitcoin even more now, and the cryptocurrency is the best inflation hedge. And if you remember, we looked at inflation and the potential effects of that earlier. And he also predicts buying Bitcoin is like investing in Steve Jobs and Apple or in Google in the early days. And he's a far far sight richer and cleverer than me. We've had this slide ready for weeks and I've been telling people this since March of this year. I traded shares in the dot-com boom of the 1990s. And in that period of time, we had companies that were being created from nowhere. They'd all got sexy, cool looking directors and sexy names. And most of them didn't have any substance. So we had the, the great climb up of prices in the dot-com boom. And then at the end of it all, many, if not most, fell away. However, out of that period came Amazon, Google, Alibaba, eBay, to name a few. Had you invested five, ten thousand dollars in those shares at that period of time, you would now be a multimillionaire. And that is what I am looking at with the crypto. I believe that crypto is going to double. I, I, I told people back in uh, March and May that 8,000 it would double. I still think it will double from today's uh, high of 13,700. But I have 20 other coins in my portfolio. And just like the dot-com boom, I am looking for the next Amazon. I am looking for companies, uh, blockchains and coins that have a real world use. Now, there's 6,000 coins at the moment in existence. And I suspect it will be the same as the dot-com boom. Most of this lot will have disappeared within the next few years. Now, you might be wary. I, I had a comment from another guy the other day, an older gentleman, and he said, I just don't get, I don't get digital currencies. I, I just really don't understand it. And I said to him, well, you've been using it for the last 50 years. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, credit card. Could you see, the question is, could you see yourself using crypto in the near future? Hmm. That's higher than I expected. Much higher than I expected. With 86% of you could see the potential to use crypto in the near future. We tested that recently on a different group and the answer was near a 60-40. For those that don't envisage doing it, I respect your opinion and I don't have an issue with that. I mean, I... I felt exactly the same as you did a while ago. But I'm going to show you something now, and this should blow your mind. Guess how much. This is a crypto coin. This is a legitimate graph. Had you invested $100 in this coin in December of 2017, have a guess how much you think this was worth by the February of 2018. Drum roll. I'll play the drums. Come on, tell me. What do you think? Stick it in the chat box. How much do you think this went up to? You put $100 in this crypto and the price went crazy. And John says 10,000. Kyle says a million. 60,000 says Jail. I think, Kyle, you've seen this before. Uh, 5,000 Mo says Lucy says 4.5 billion. Uh, 5 million from Ewan. Okay, guys, right. The answer is. Doo -doo -doo -doo. 
850,000. It is not a misprint. I have checked it 10 times. It is a legitimate growth. It was based on, it's a bit like penny shares in some ways, as companies become more established and accepted by the bigger exchange. The real reason why this shot up was that Pornhub, the biggest pornography site on the internet, accepted this coin for payment. So anybody who normally registered with Pornhub and risked their credit card details being exposed and the partner finding out suddenly could register anonymously. So now, how many of you think it's a good idea? Hands up. <laughs> we had 86% before. If we haven't got 100% now, we think it's not worth investing the price of a fancy dinner on something that could shoot to the moon, then I give in. <laughs> okay, right. All well and good. So you can now make a profit. What do you do with the money? You, you don't necessarily want to convert it back into fiat, whether that be for your tax reasons or whatever reasons you want. Already at the moment, you can spend your crypto at up to 100,000 retailers. Microsoft have been doing it for a while, stock, Amazon and Starbucks, you can do it, but indirectly through an app. And then as I just shown you a little earlier, suddenly PayPal, 26 million retailers sell their products through PayPal. It is becoming legal. There is a potential product profit, excuse me. <clears throat> You've seen how the big investors are getting involved. The government are going to create their own. Uh, high net worth individuals are looking as a store of value. The other thing is it's easy to store and be and portable. So you could put $10 billion worth on that pen drive, as opposed to bars of gold, which would be filling your lounge, your house, and all the rest of it. So if you're ready to consider investing in what I believe could be the best investment in your lifetime, the key thing, obviously, is knowing when to buy and sell. It's all well and good putting your money in, but if you don't know when to take a profit or you don't know when to buy, then clearly you, you're peeing in the dark, really. Now, those of you who know me from my mentor tra training will know my reputation. I am known as being spookily accurate at my predictions for price based on charts and fundamental analysis. Back on the 11th of May, I told folks to buy Bitcoin at 8150. It had been at 10,000 the week before. This was over a weekend. We started our new portfolio for folks to follow at this date. It went from 8,150 to over 10,500 in two weeks. By the 17th of August, it was at 12,470. And yesterday it was up at 13,700. Here was another example. And again, traders amongst you will recognize the break. This was a triangle breakout, fundamentally made sense to me. I told my followers that I was buying more at 9,310. And within a fortnight, it gone to 11,677. And what else do we have? Okay, gold. I mentioned earlier, Steve, I, was, I told Steve and friends and followers back in March, when the COVID crisis hit, it was really strange because gold dropped as well. You expect the stock market to drop. You don't expect gold to drop. This technically and fundamentally was the place to buy gold. And I told folks on the 20th of March and by the 7th of August, it risen 38%. It is currently meandering around an 1850, 1900. So one thing I said earlier, I do not trade this. Any traders amongst you, I do not under any circumstances use leverage. This is far too risky. It's too wild a ride. And the chances of you losing money are 90 times greater than making a profit. I am buying and holding. So even if you only got small funds, the view that I am taking is I am buying and holding. I would not, under any circumstances, trade it. Now, in the last couple of weeks since we started promoting this webinar, our portfolio is up 9.9%. We have total growth, as experienced with the beta testers, of 44.9% as of yesterday morning, and that's since May. Now, as ever, we have to point out that past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results but I do share my portfolio with folks. So why you need to get involved now? I have shown you that everything is happening very, very quickly. 
Crypto is going mainstream. Last week, PayPal getting on board, Wall Street queuing up. And the thing with Wall Street, when they get involved, guys, and start packaging this, then it could well be too late for the little guy because by the time those lot put their fees in the way, uh, it, it suddenly becomes a lot less attractive. So you need to take action now. So how much should you risk? You saw Paul Tudor Jones said he's only risking 2%. And the moral of all of this, again, I am not a financial advisor. I am telling you what I am doing personally, and I am explaining what I have told family, friends, and followers but you ultimately make your own decision. So what happened next? This was the more conservative uh, part of my portfolio for crypto. The beta testers joined us, this is Cardano. They joined us in the May, which was back in here, and they saw grains of 5,000%. The folks who joined us from the October webinar you just watched was 1,000%. Bitcoin shot up to 67,000 overall. Crow, another one of ours that went up, I can't remember, I think Crow went up, was it 2,000%? Oh, three and a half thousand percent. Ethereum, you see the moves on all of them. Obviously, there was then it was followed by a drop, and this is where the trading skill comes in. We were buying on the dips and taking profit on the way up. And then we added Solana a little later on, and Solana actually went up to almost 6,000%. And Uniswap, I seem to recall, did even better. So Uniswap was up now 2,400%. All within 10, 11 months of the webinar that you've just watched. So I hope you have learned something about crypto from it. You understand why I am so interested in it and why I am obviously looking for opportunities to get back involved. I hope you've liked this video and if you wish to do me a favor and also do your family and friends a favor, share it with them. Please like and share and ask them to subscribe to our channel.